New York City, there's no place quite like it. Even if you think you know New York City well, the world-class museums, iconic buildings, the subway and unforgettable views, there's always something new and exciting to discover. New York City is the world center for media, culture, food, fashion, entertainment, art, research, finance and trade. Many consider it the most important and influential city in the world. It's simply got it all. Yet for millions of people, it's not the views, the buildings, the entertainment or razzle-dazzle glitz and glamour that attracted them to New York. For millions, New York is the greatest city in the world because it offered them hope, freedom, and an opportunity to start a new life. And that hope and freedom is symbolized by the world-famous Statue of Liberty that stands at the gateway to New York. This monument has welcomed some of the most desperate and destitute people on the planet, survivors of torture, refugees fleeing violence and persecution into the safety and freedom of New York City where their hopes were realized by the opportunity to rebuild their lives and start again. One of them, a lonely and heartbroken woman, fleeing the horrors of the world's most terrible war, found hope and more. She found her lost and treasured gold and ivory tablecloth here in New York. And that discovery led to an incredible reunion with the love of her life. You just must hear her inspiring story that could well bring hope and freedom to your life as well. Join me as we follow her incredible journey. For the first time in the history of the human race, more people live in cities than in the countryside. Cities are growing at a faster rate than any other habitat on Earth. More and more people want to visit, live or work in the world's cities. By 2030, there will be 41 megacities in the world with populations over 10 million. And some of these cities are more popular than others. There's a handful of super brand cities that are particularly desirable. This list of cities includes London, Paris, Dubai, Singapore, Barcelona, Tokyo and Hong Kong. But the clear leader and by far the most popular of all the world cities is New York. It's the global hub for international finance, politics, communication, media, fashion and culture. This is the city where most people want to visit, do business or live. It's home to many world-class museums, art galleries and theatres. Many of the largest corporations have their headquarters here. The headquarters of the United Nations is in New York and many countries have a consulate here. It's the most important and influential city on Earth. New York's influence on the globe and all its inhabitants is hard to overstate. Decisions made within this city's boundaries often have impacts and ramifications across the world. It's a global power city. But that's not all. With its fabulous shopping, Broadway's thrilling shows, amazing food and first-rate sports events, New York is considered the entertainment capital of the world and draw 60 million visitors from around the globe each year. New York, New York, the city that never sleeps, the city that throbs with endless energy. And then New York's got awesome architecture and parks, plus a magnificent skyline. And you can take in its grandeur from observation decks at icons like the Empire State Building and the top of the rock the observatory on top of the Rockefeller Center, or on a stroll 
across the Brooklyn Bridge. The new One World Trade Center, the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere, was just named the world's best new attraction. A 60-second elevator ride whisked you up to the observatory at the top. Surrounded by 360-degree panoramic views, it feels like you can see forever. There it is, New York City. It consists of five boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, the Bronx, and Staten Island. It's all one city, but a thousand worlds. New York's a real melting pot. Over three and a half million immigrants and their descendants from over 180 countries live here, making it the most cosmopolitan city in the world and giving it the largest foreign-born population of any city in the world. As many as 800 languages are spoken in New York, making it linguistically the most diverse city in the world. This is a city of immigrants. New York has been the largest point of entry into the United States by immigrants. It's been the gateway to the American dream. New York has served as a sanctuary for diverse groups of immigrants from around the world, including millions of refugees, survivors of the Holocaust, the homeless, the persecuted and tortured, the desperate and the destitute. It's offered the most vulnerable people on earth hope, freedom, and an opportunity to start a new life. And nothing symbolizes this hope and freedom more than the Statue of Liberty. It represents America as the land of the free. It's the first thing most of the immigrants saw when they arrived in America by boat. And what an imposing and impressive sight it is. The Statue of Liberty stands 93 meters high and weighs 204 metric tons. When it was first erected in 1886, it was the tallest structure in New York and the tallest statue in the world. It was a gift from the people of France to the people of America, celebrating the centennial of the American Declaration of Independence and the friendship between the two nations. The statue's full name is liberty enlightening the world. The torch that she holds up high is covered with 24 karat gold leaf and represents liberty and enlightenment. The seven spikes on her crown represent the seven continents and the seven seas across which freedom should be spread. The broken chains and shackles at her feet represent complete victory over tyranny. Etched on a bronze plaque on the inner wall of the statue's pedestal are the famous words of the Jewish immigrant poet Emma Lazarus. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. As the immigrant ships passed under her torch and shining face, this is the welcoming message of hope the statue brought to the outcasts and downtrodden of the world as they made their way to the immigration processing station at nearby Ellis Island, located only a kilometer further on in New York Harbor. For 62 years, Ellis Island served as the nation's biggest and busiest immigration station. Before its closure in 1954, more than 12 million immigrants arriving by ship were processed here as their first stop on their way to a new life in America. Today, more than 40% of the population, or over 100 million people living in the United States, can trace their family history to a relative who came through the station at Ellis Island. For the large majority of immigrants, the entry process on Ellis Island took only three to five hours. They were registered, medically cleared, and then taken by ferry boat to New York City. Some of the immigrants who passed through Ellis Island became famous household names, including Albert Einstein, Bob Hope, Irving Berlin, Isaac Asimov, and Kerry Grant. 
But most of the 12 million immigrants that the ferry delivered to New York were people whose names we'll never know. However, many of them had poignant, moving stories to tell of how they had to leave their homes and flee to America to escape war, drought, famine, poverty, and religious persecution. One of those nameless, unknown immigrants was a refugee from Vienna, Austria. She came from a prominent and prosperous family. When World War II broke out, she and her husband opposed the Nazis. Persecution followed and their lives were endangered. They soon realized that the only way to survive was to leave their home and flee the country. They were advised to go separately. And so her long and arduous journey to America began when her husband put her on a train for Switzerland. They planned that he would join her soon afterwards, but she never saw her husband or her home again. He was arrested trying to escape and sent to a concentration camp. Later she heard that he died there. After arriving in Switzerland alone and vulnerable, she trekked for days to reach a seaport. When she arrived at the coast, she boarded a steamship. The trip across the Atlantic lasted two weeks. She spent most of the time beneath the ship's deck in an open area that accommodated large numbers of refugees. The conditions were terrible. The place was overcrowded, unsanitary, and prone to disease because of the uncleanliness. But she refused to despair and never gave up hope. Her first glimpse of America was the Statue of Liberty. After clearing Ellis Island, the ferry took her to New York City. She settled on Staten Island, the southernmost of New York's boroughs. The views across the bay to the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island kept the flame of hope burning in her heart. Although it was December and Christmas was approaching, she continued looking for work to get money and to ease her loneliness. She had another job interview the morning before Christmas. It was for a governess position, looking after the children of one of the wealthy families in the city. Because Staten Island is the only New York borough not connected to the subway, she caught the ferry to her appointment. There had been a lot of rain that winter in New York and the weather was cold and stormy, but it didn't deter her. She dressed warmly and went to the appointment. Unfortunately, her interview wasn't successful. As a war refugee, her English was imperfect and she didn't get the job. Disappointed and despondent, she walked slowly back to the bus stop, fighting the cold and wind, as well as fighting back her tears. To make matters worse, she just missed the bus. So she stood cold and alone at the bus stop in front of an old stone church, the very church where a young pastor and his wife had just experienced a disaster. The church was very old. Once, long ago, it had flourished, but now the good old days had passed. But the pastor and his young wife believed in their dilapidated church. They worked hard, repairing pews, plastering walls, painting doors and scrubbing floors. Soon they were ahead of schedule and well on their way to being finished. But late in December, just before Christmas, the severe winter storms and driving rain took their toll and the worst blow fell on the old church. The roof leaked and a large chunk of rain-soaked plaster fell out of the inside wall just behind the pulpit. Christmas was only two days away and now all their hard work was in vain. The dispirited couple headed home. On the way, they noticed that a local business was having an auction for charity and so stopped in to offer their support. One of the items up for sale caught the pastor's attention, a gold and ivory lace tablecloth. It was a magnificent item, nearly five metres long. It was old fashioned and outdated. There were a few half-hearted bids. Then the pastor was struck by a great idea. He bid for the unwanted tablecloth 
and purchased it for $6.50. He and his wife hurried back to the church and hung the tablecloth up on the wall behind the pulpit as a wall tapestry. It completely covered the whole. It was just perfect, and the extraordinary beauty of the shimmering handwork cast a soft glow over the front of the church. The couple was delighted and returned home with a spring in their step. Their plans were back on track, and now they could proceed with their Christmas Eve service. Just after noon on the day of Christmas Eve, as the pastor was opening the church, he noticed the refugee woman standing cold and alone at the bus stop. He called out to her that the bus wouldn't be there for another 40 minutes and invited her into the church to get warm. The woman came in and sat down in a pew and rested. After a while, she dropped her head and prayed. She looked as the pastor began to adjust the great golden ivory tablecloth across the hole. She rose suddenly and walked up the steps to the pulpit. She looked at the tablecloth. The pastor smiled and started to tell her about the storm damage, but she didn't seem to listen. She took up a fold of the cloth and rubbed it between her fingers. It's mine, she said. It's my banquet cloth. She lifted up a corner and showed the surprised pastor that there were initials embroidered on it. She explained how her husband had the cloth made especially for her in Brussels. There couldn't be another like it. For the next 10 minutes, the woman and the pastor talked together. She shared her story with him. The pastor tried to comfort her and urged her to take the tablecloth. She refused. She wanted the pastor to keep it for the church. Then she went out into the cold on her way home. As the church began to fill on Christmas Eve, it was clear that the tablecloth was going to be a great success. It had been skillfully designed to look its best in the soft candlelight. After the service, the pastor stood at the doorway. Many people told him that the church looked beautiful. One gentle-faced man, he was the local clock and watch repairman, looked rather puzzled. After sitting in one of the pews for some time, he asked the pastor where he got the tablecloth on the front wall from. In a soft accent, he said that it looked identical to the one he gave his wife many years ago in Vienna. The pastor suddenly became very excited. He told the jeweller about the woman who had been in the church earlier in the day. The startled jeweller clutched the pastor's arm. Could it be? Was his wife still alive? Together the two drove to Staten Island. That Christmas Eve, the jeweller and his wife, two lonely refugees in New York City, who had been separated through so many sad years, were reunited. Reunited by the Christmas event and the tablecloth. Their separation and loneliness was over. And how fitting that this moving reunion occurred at the time of the year when people are thinking about and celebrating the birth of Jesus, because His birth brought about an even more moving and miraculous reunion. Yes, the birth of Jesus brings people together, it brings families and friends together, but even more importantly, it brings people and God back together. Heaven and earth were united by the birth of Jesus. That's why Jesus came. He came to reunite heaven and earth. And that's why His birth is such wonderful news. Listen to how the angels shared this good news with the shepherds in Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. 
To understand why the birth of Jesus is such good news, we've got to recognise that it's one episode of a much bigger story that goes all the way back to the beginning of human existence. This is a story that goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden when God created our first parents. They were perfect and lived in a perfect world and they had a perfect relationship with God. There was the closest relationship between God and people, between heaven and earth. But sadly, this perfect environment and relationship was shattered when our first parents rebelled against God and went their own sinful way. Their actions had serious consequences. Their disobedience separated them from God and that resulted in destruction and death. They had no ability to fix this situation. So the human race was doomed. But God is love, and He just couldn't stand being separated from us, the people He loves. He couldn't bear the thought of us perishing all alone. He had a plan. He decided that He would come to earth Himself and pay the penalty for our sins and mistakes. He would die so that we could live. And so on a silent night, a holy night, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Emmanuel, God is with us. Notice the details and significance of Jesus' birth. He was born away from home, so he understands our separation and loneliness. He was born on a journey, so he understands our restless and wandering nature. He was born in the insecurity of a barn, so he understands our insecurity and lack of spiritual comfort and inner peace. He roamed the roads and towns of his day, so he understands our endless search for fulfillment and contentment. Whatever problem you may be facing, Jesus understands what you're going through. You are not alone. In other words, and here's the good news, Jesus came because God loves us and didn't want to be separated from us. There is hope. Because of Jesus, every one of us can be reunited with God. In Jesus, heaven and earth are joined together. We are no longer alone. We are no longer separated. Jesus has rescued us from separation and loneliness. And now nothing can separate us from God's love. Notice what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you get that? Now, nothing can separate us from God's love. And so we can be assured today that God is with us. He provides security, comfort and fulfilment. He's here to give us hope, to forgive our sins, to give us a new song, to give us peace and happiness. New York is possibly the greatest city our world has ever seen. It's simply got it all. Yet for some people, it's not the views, the buildings, the entertainment or the glamour that attracted them to New York. For some, New York is the greatest city in the world because it offered them hope, freedom and an opportunity to start a new life. One of them, a lonely and heartbroken woman fleeing the horrors of war, found hope and more. She found her lost and treasured golden ivory tablecloth here in New York. And that discovery led to an incredible reunion with the love of her life. They were reunited by the Christmas event and the tablecloth. Their separation and loneliness was over. Jesus offers to end our loneliness and separation as well. So if you're struggling with the challenges of life, and are looking for inner peace and true happiness, if you'd like to get closer to God, 
then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our viewers today. It's the book, The Best Gift of All. This book is our gift to you and is absolutely free. There are no costs or obligations whatsoever. Thousands have been blessed and inspired by this book, The Best Gift of All. So make the most of this wonderful opportunity to receive the gift we have for you today. Here's the information you need. Phone or text 0436 333 55 in Australia or 020 422 2042 in New Zealand. Or visit our website tij.tv or simply scan the QR code on your screen and we'll send you today's free offer totally free of charge and with no obligation. So don't delay. Phone or text 0436 333 55 in Australia or 020 422 2042 in New Zealand. Or visit our website tij.tv or simply scan the QR code on your screen and we'll send you today's free offer completely free of charge and with absolutely no obligation. Write to us at GPO Box 274, Sydney, New South Wales, 2001, Australia, or PO Box 76673, Manukau, Auckland, 2241, New Zealand. Don't delay. Call or text us now. If you've enjoyed today's journey to New York City and our reflections on the birth of Jesus and the hope and peace He brings, be sure to join us again next week when we will share another of life's journeys together and experience another new and thought-provoking perspective on the peace, insight, understanding and hope that only the Bible can give us. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, the greatest gift of all, our Saviour and our Deliverer. We thank you for taking our place and paying the penalty for our sins and mistakes. We are so glad that we are no longer separated from you. We are so grateful that you are a loving God. Thank you for the peace and happiness you give us. You are our refuge and our place of safety. We commit our lives to you and pray for your continued blessing and guidance. And we ask this in Jesus' name, Amen.